Algebra 2, Chapter 10.3, Exercise 1 through 12. What we're going to do in this section is solve the odd number problems 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11, which are related to solving these rational equations. And here in problems 1 and 2, we're given a rational equation, and we're given a table and a coordinate grid and asked to graph and solve by graphing. So what we're going to do for this equation right here, we're going to solve the right side of this equation by adding 3 to both sides of it. And when we do that, on the right side we have 0, and on the left side we have x over x plus 4 minus 3. And what we can do to find, to, to graph this, is simply change this 0 to y. So if we have the equation y equals x over x plus 4 minus 3. Uh, actually, it'll be plus 3. There we go. So, now the first thing I'm going to look for, even before setting this table, is to look for an excluded value. And we know that our denominator cannot be equal to 0, so x plus 4 cannot equal 0, so therefore x cannot equal negative 4. And so this x cannot equal negative 4. I'm going to draw this right over here as a vertical line where x equals negative 4 on the graph. And this becomes our uh, vertical asymptote, which is x equals negative 4. Now that's going to be very helpful to us when we eventually graph this equation. So now we're going to take this x over x plus 4 plus 3 and use our input values here in the x column. And you're going to have to bear with me because I don't have a whole lot of room here. So uh, the right is going to be a little bit small. So in place of x, negative 8. So we have negative 8 over negative 8 plus 4 and then plus 3. And that's going to, uh, in the denominator, negative 8 plus 4 is going to be negative 4. So we have negative 8 divided by negative 4. That's going to be 2. And 2 plus 3 is going to be 5. And so our coordinate pair here is going to be negative 8, comma 5. And now for negative 6, so we put negative 6 in place of x, and down the denominator, negative 6 in place of x, plus 3. So in the denominator, negative 6 plus 4, that's going to be negative 2. And in the numerator, we have negative 6. So negative 6 divided by negative 2 is going to be 3. And 3 plus 3 is 6. So we have the coordinate pair negative 6, comma 6. Okay, now for negative 5. Negative 5 over negative 5 plus 4 plus 3. And what is that going to be equal to? Well, in the denominator, negative 5 plus 4 is going to be negative 1. So we're going to have negative 1 in the denominator, and negative 5 divided by negative 1 is 5, and 5 plus 3 is 8. So we have the point here, negative 5, comma 8. And so what we have is the left side, uh, at least three, three points to the left side of vertical asymptotes. So I'm just going to sketch these in right now. So we have negative 8 comma 5, which is going to be right here. We have 
negative 6, comma 6. So here's negative 6, comma 6. And finally, we have negative 5, comma 8. So here's negative 5, 8. So what we're going to be looking like is this. I'm just sketching this. So we're going to we're going to come up against our vertical asymptote here. I'm just going to draw it a little more accurately. That's a little better. See, that's what that little curve is going to look like. It's going to come up and approach, but not touch this vertical asymptote. Now, for these other points, okay, we have uh, input of negative 3.5 over uh, negative 3.5. It's kind of hard to see here. Plus 3. Well, in the denominator, a negative 3.5 plus 4 is going to be 1 half, and we have negative 3.5 divided by 1 half. That's going to be negative 7, and negative 7 plus 4 plus, plus 3 equals negative 4. So our point here is going to be uh, 3 So our point here is going to be negative 3.5, comma, uh, negative 4. And now we put in negative 2, negative 2 over negative 2, plus 4, plus 3. We get, in the denominator, negative 2 plus 4 is going to be, Two and negative two divided by two is negative negative one and negative one plus three is two. So our point here is going to be negative two, comma two. And lastly, if we plug in zero, we get zero over zero plus four plus three. Well, that's just going to be three. So we get 0, 3, and that's going to be our y-intercept. So we put in negative 3.5, so there's negative 2, negative 3. So negative 3.5 is going to be really close, comma, negative 4. So right here, close to that vertical asymptote. And then we have negative 2, comma, 2. So there's negative 2, comma, 2. And finally, we have 0, comma, 3. So we're going to be looking like this. So what we're going to have is uh, is that going to be our yeah zero okay yeah it's going to be our horizontal asymptote. I have a horizontal asymptote where it should be at x equals 3. Anyway, that's what we have. So let's just go ahead and if we look at our graph here, it looks like we have a we have the point negative 3, comma 0. So our solution, according to what we see on the graph, is going to be x equals negative 3. Now, we don't see it exactly here. It looks like it's kind of crossing. We have to estimate it. Now, one thing we can do is we can plug in negative 3 to this equation. If we plug in y equals negative 3 in place of x over negative 3 plus 4 plus 3, 
we're going to get negative in the denominator, negative 3 plus 4 is going to be 1, and negative 3 over 1 is going to be negative 3. And then we have plus 3 is equal to 0. So that checks out. So x equals negative 3 is a solution. And it's the only solution we have here. And we're looking for where the graph touches or crosses the x-axis. Now, I took the time to, in my graphing calculator, enter this equation. And when you graph the equation, we see the uh, we see touching the x-axis here at x equals negative 3. And to verify that, we can go ahead and take second trace. And we can arrow to the left of our x-intercept. And, and press Enter. And then we go to, that didn't work out, second trace. Zero. There we go. So it says left bound. Press enter. We go to the right of the x-intercept. Press enter and enter one last time. We get the point negative three comma zero. Also, we can take a look at the table view. And if we go to where x equals negative three, we see that y equals zero. Check. Okay. The next problem that we're going to look at is find the LCD for each set of rational expressions. And the purpose of finding the LCD would be to uh, use the least common denominator to find out what we have to multiply our denominator by to uh, end up solving the equation. So what we're going to do is find the factors of denominators. And the factors are going to be 2 times quantity x plus 8. And then for this other one here, we're going to have in the denominator 3 times quantity x. And what times 3 equals negative 27? Well, that would be negative 9. So what we have is we have 2 times 3 times and this is going to be our LCD, 2 times 3 times quantity x plus 8 times quantity x minus 9. And this 2 times 3 is 6. We get 6 times quantity x plus 8 times quantity x minus 9. And if we had an equation here, we could use our least common denominator to uh, commence solving this rational equation. OK, uh, next on the problem, 5. Well, let's, we have more complicated looking denominators here. So the first we're going to do is get factors of our denominators. So for this x squared plus 5x, I'm just going to write down x squared plus 5x plus 6. Our factors for this, and we have a quadratic trinomial, and usually if a quadratic trinomial is factorable, we're going to factor it into two linear binomials. So we have pluses all the way. So we're going to have x plus, x plus. So what two numbers do we multiply together to equal 6 but add together to equal 5? Well, that's going to be easy. That's going to be 2 and 3. And then for this one here, we have uh, 10x plus 20. Our greatest common factor here. It's going to be 10, 10 times quantity x plus 2. And then lining up all the factors, um, 
we have x plus 2 is common to both denominators. And so our least common denominator here is going to be 10 times x plus 2. And we just have to write x plus 2 once because x plus 2 is represented in each denominator that we factored. And then the remaining one that we have left over here is x plus 3. So this is going to be our least common denominator that we could use to start solving this equation. And now we have problem 7. We have, uh, we're going to find our factors first. So we're going to have, first of all, 3x squared minus 21x minus 54. And our greatest common factor here is 3. And 3 times what? Well, 3 times x squared minus 7x minus 18. And that's going to be equal to 3 times we have x and x and we have a negative 18 so we're going to have a negative times a positive so what two numbers do you add together to get negative eight, a negative 7 but multiply together equal negative 18 would it be 5 and Let's see, 6 and 3? No. How about 9 and 2? Yeah, because if we put x minus 9 times quantity x plus 2, that's going to work out, right? We're going to get negative 9x plus 2x. So this is going to check out. Now, for this other denominator, we have 21x squared minus 84. And so our common factor here is 21, and 21 times we're going to have x squared, and what is 84 divided by 21? It's going to be negative 4. So what we're going to have is 21 times quantity x, using different squares, x minus 2 times quantity x plus 2. Now, let's look for what we need for our least common denominator. Now, for the number here, we have 21 over here on the right uh, denominator. It's a factor of the right denominator. But 3 is a factor of the left denominator. So the thing that will help us out, we don't have to multiply these together. We can just use 21 because 21 already includes the 3 in it. And next we have x minus 9, and then we have x plus 2, and then we have x minus 2. And so this is going to be our least common denominator for problem number 7. Next, our problems nine on are when we're going to be using the tools of finding least common denominator and factoring to solve rational equations algebraically. So the first thing I'm going to do before solving a rational equation is to find our excluded values. Now uh, this book and most books to find excluded values, what they do is they say you set your denominators equal to zero, your rational part of your denominator. So 4x, they will put equals zero, but I like rather to put does not equal zero. And if we divide both sides by 4, we see that x cannot equal zero. And likewise, for uh, 12x cannot equal zero, we get the same thing, x 
cannot equal zero either way. So, so that's what we have. So that's going to be our limitation. Now to find our least common denominator, um, least common denominator, we're going to have four and x. We have four times x. We have six, and we have twelve x. Well, the the number twelve comprehends four and six and twelve, so we're going to have twelve, and we have x. So that's going to be our least common denominator. So we're going to use that least common denominator to multiply by each of these fractions. So I'm going to come down here below and put 9 over 4x and multiply this fraction by our least common denominator, which is 12x. And the strategy that we're using here is what I call clear the denominator. And multiplying by our, our least common denominator is exactly what that does. So uh, that's going to be our first fraction. And we have minus 5 sixths. And we're going to multiply this minus 5 sixths by our least common denominator and now we have equals we have negative 13 over 12x and we're going to multiply by our least common denominator which is 12x and then we cancel what we can on this left one we have x over x cancel and this uh, 12 divided by 4 becomes 3 so we have left over 27 and then we have minus 5 times 12 divided by 6 x. Well, 5 times 12 is negative 60 divided by 6 is going to be negative 10 x. And then we have on the right side of the equal sign, we have 12x over 12x cancels. We get negative 13. So now we can just go about solving this linear equation. If we subtract 27 from both sides of the equation, we get uh, negative 10x equals negative 40. And dividing by negative 10, we get x is equal to 4. And we see that that is not one of our excluded values, and so this is going to be our solution. Okay. Now we have our next automobile problem, which is 11, which is the last one we're going to do here. And let's uh, use our same strategy. We're going to try to find our excluded values. Okay, we have x squared minus 2x minus 15 cannot be equal to 0. We have x plus 3 cannot be equal to 0. And we have x minus 5 cannot be equal to 0. So we're going to use these inequalities to, to find what x cannot be. So what are going to be our factors of x squared minus 2x minus 15? We're going to have x and x. So what two numbers do you multiply together equal negative 15 but add to get equal negative 2? I'm thinking negative 5 and, and positive 3. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And then over here, so we, we have x uh, cannot be 
cannot equal negative 3. And I forgot over here. So we have x cannot equal 5. x cannot equal negative 3. And finally, over here on the right, we have x cannot equal 5. So these would be our excluded values. x is not equal to 5, nor is x equal to negative 3. Now, to find our least common denominator, we sort of already worked what those are here because our least common denominator, our denominators, the factors of them are x minus 5, x plus 3, and that's all we have. So we're going to have our least common denominator is going to be quantity x minus 5 times quantity x plus 3. And we're going to clear the denominator out here. So uh, let me see. I guess I'm going to take on faith I have enough room here. So we get 56 over. And I'm going to rewrite this denominator here in factored form of quantity x minus 5 times quantity x plus 3. And then we multiply this by x minus 5, x plus 3. And then we have minus 6 over x plus 3. And we're going to multiply this by quantity x minus 5 times quantity x plus 3. And now the other side of our equal sign, we have 7 over x minus 5. And we're going to multiply this by our least common denominator, which is x minus 5, x plus 3. And we just cross out where we can. Well, here, we have x minus 5 times x plus 3. Cross out both the numerator and denominator. Here we have x plus 3 over x plus 3 will cancel. And here on the right side of the equal sign, we have x minus 5 over x minus 5. So what we have left is 56 minus 6 times quantity x minus 5. And that's going to be equal to, we're going to have 7 times what we have left on the right side, which is x plus 3. So we can just go ahead and distribute. So we get 56 is equal uh, 56 minus 6x. And negative 6 times negative 5 is plus 30. And on the right side, we have 7x plus 21. So we can do different things here. If we add 6x to both sides of this equation, we have on the left side 56 plus 30. That's going to be 86. And on the right side, we have 13x plus 21. And now if we subtract 21 from both sides, the left side, we have 86 minus 21, which is 65. So if 65 equals 13x, and we divide by 13, we um, have x is equal to 65 divided by 13, which is 5. Well, uh, 5, that's our only solution. 5 is an excluded value. So 
x equals 5 is what we call an extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is a solution that is created in the process of solving an equation. It's an incorrect solution. This, and we can find out what they are by seeing if it's already an excluded value. Extraneous solution. So we say no real solution. So that will be, I'll just box this whole thing in. So that's going to be it. I invite you to look over all these other problems. Good luck, and thanks for viewing.